can speak to the mountains in your life. Yes, you can. Nothing's impossible. Yes, we are. Yes, we are standing on the promises of God because according to 1 Corinthians, every promise of God is yes and amen. And so we thank God and we praise him for another day that we are living in his promise. This is the day that the Lord has made, one in which we will rejoice and be glad in it. Aren't we grateful and glad that God has made great promises to us, promises to love us, to keep us, to never forsake us. And we are basking in those promises that we have another day. Every day that I get, I take that as a personal kiss from God, an invitation to be engulfed and to be uh, engaged in his love and his affection and his care uh, and his, uh, his, his affection towards me. And so I'm grateful for today. Tuesday, I think it is June the 23rd in sure. California. It's a little bit hotter uh, than we care to it to be, but we ain't got no complaints. We ain't got nothing to be mad about. God has been good to us, and for that, we are grateful and glad. So happy, overjoyed, enthusiastic to have this. This opportunity uh, to minister uh, to the lives of those that will be watching a mother's cry. We praise God uh, for this opportunity that is not a one that we, it's a right, it's not a duty, but we do count it as a privilege. That God has so sovereignly from the foundation of the world designed that today, right now, Thursday at 2 o'clock, if you're watching it live, that we might have the opportunity to interact, that the seed of God might be sown into your life, that the spirit of God might germinate and regenerate uh, his words and his precious promises that you might grow and that you might bear fruit in God. That's an amazing opportunity that we don't take light. We don't come in and run it. We don't pull nothing off at the top of our head, but we prayerfully ask God, what would he have us to say to the people of God that might bring change, that might bring elevation and illumination to our lives? And so we believe that we can never go into this program without first praying and asking God's sovereign blessings and his presence upon this program. So Father, we just thank you and we praise you as we always do every Thursday for another opportunity you have given us for a mother's cry, another opportunity that we have to minister and to be ministered unto. And so, Lord, we pray that as you have opened this door, that you will also walk in this door, that you will presence yourself among yes. us. We don't believe that you're just in temples or in tabernacles, but we believe right here in this studio and through these cameras, the Spirit of God is made available to all those that are listening. And so move, God, as only you can. Touch, Amen. deliver, Amen. illuminate, uh, turn on the light lights, shut doors, open doors, burn some bridges and take us over some bridges. When you get through doing the work that only you can, the only way that you can, we're going to be careful to give your name, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. And everybody got there saying, thank God, thank amen. God. amen. Love each and every one of you that's joining us on the Mother's Cry. Those of you that are joining us on Facebook Live, we love you, Sister Rachel, our Sister Michelle Lars, our Brother James Cornegay, who was our knockout guest from last week. Yes, good God. Yes. I'm just feasting. I started to just play the replay of last week. You know, sometimes you get <laughs> yeah. good food and you want to go in the refrigerator and just pull out some Leftover. leftovers. Leftovers is better this week uh, than it was last week. L. James Cordergay, he was Great just job. that good. I have so many people talking about this amazing whirlwind that came in and just blessed us real good. As always, we got two people that we always want to shout out. We want to first want to shout out uh, our founder, uh, the founder, the mother of this program, Mother Ev uh, Evangelist Shirley Knight here for the great and awesome work that she's doing. Uh, we always want to continue to keep praying, God, that God's going to continue to strengthen her, that God's going to continue to uh, lift up her body, uh, to touch her, her spirit. She's doing great stuff. She's just giving this to some great and awesome sons in the gospel. She's letting them go with it. And so we ain't mad, amen. We're going to do everything we can to honor her and to honor God with this program and keep it uh, in the vision and the path that she set for us. And the guest host with the most, uh, Brother Sam Darling, uh, he's hanging. Have we, have we stopped counting the weeks? Are you still?
still count the weeks? I don't even know no more. <laughs> I don't I stop count. <laughs> yes, sir. We're glad to have him here with us. Yes, and sir. all of you that are joining us. Now, today, we promised on last week that we're going to promise uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Darling, we promised some gift cards to some callers. Today, our subject is on the promises of God. Yes, and so sir. some of you might be standing on some God's promise. You might believe in God for some promises. We want you to call him. We want to know what those promises are. We're going to believe God with you. If we can find out that they're biblical, don't call him and be uh, saying that God told you that he's going to give you somebody else's husband. We ain't going to touch and agree on that one. But if you got one that we can kind of find in God's word, if you can got one that we can kind of remotely see in scripture, uh, we're we going to stand and believe God with you. And because we want you to call uh, the number 323-965-1600. Once again, if you're on Facebook Live or if you watch it anywhere, the number is 323-965-1600. Call. We got a Subway gift card for you. We got a Subway gift card to anybody who will call and participate on this show. I think we got about four or five that we want to give away, uh, give you a lunch, give you a little foot long. What you get? What do you get when you go to Subway, Doc? Do you go to Subway that often? Uh, every now and then, yes. Every sir. now and then. All yes, right, sir. all right, all right. I go get the new rotisserie chicken foot long. I like uh, that tuna. You like the I like tuna? That tuna, yes, sir. All right, make all right. the tuna there. All right, you ain't on camera, Dr. Kelly, but tell us what you, when you go to Subway with you. Meatball marinara. Meatball marinara for Dr. Care. It didn't Meatball take him long to didn't say take him long. He knows that one. Foot long. Right Come on. on. <laughs> Sister Dorothy, what you get when you go to Subway? Turkey. Turkey. All right. So somebody, whoever's going to win these gift cards, if you want to treat us, we got one meatball marinara, we got one turkey, we got uh, tuna, and we got rotisserie chicken. So we would love to have you. Those uh, that you call us, let us know. Uh, what your promise is and what your favorite Subway sandwich is. I'm joking. This, this, this show is not about Subway sandwiches. Uh, uh, while you are online, while you're online, please do me a favor. Go uh, to Mother uh, Shirley Knight Harris's Facebook page. Let her know that you appreciate her. Uh, you are encouraged. You're strengthened by the show. Uh, tell her to keep sowing, uh, that God is going to keep uh, restoring and giving to her the bountiful blessing that we know he's already doing because if the Lord wasn't doing it, she couldn't keep doing it. So uh, keep doing it to encourage her. While you're there, go like uh, uh, my page, uh, Pastor Philip White, go and say something uh, to Brother Sam Darling. I tagged him this week. I tagged him this week. Uh, he's a little yeah. social media. He's trying to learn the, I'm learning. the, the, he's learning the, the, the ropes of me. social media. <laughs> and, and so go in there and tag him. Just let him know you love the show. If you have an idea of a show, something you want to see us talk about, uh, something you want to see us go on, just let us know uh, and we'll get it from there. I think that's that's about it. We ready to get at it. You ready to get at it, bro? Yes, sir. Let's All right. Do it. All right. Got Let's some good it. folks here. Sister Glory White, good God from Zion. She joined us. She's watching. Hey, Rob sis. Black has joined us. Yeah, all the great and awesome people uh, that's watching us on live and watching us on. Uh, we're talking about the promises of God today. I want to talk about the promises of God. We want to deal with it a couple of a uh, couple of things. We want to encourage people to know, uh, first of all, that we do believe that I believe that God personally has given. He has made some promises. We want to know that if God has made some promises, what is a promise? Uh, what do those promises look like? Uh, we want to discuss all those promises to everybody. Uh, and if they are, uh, if he has made some promises, what are the promises that New Testament believers can kind of stand on and know that this is a promise from God? Then the word promise, if I can just take that part of the definition, is a commitment. It is a, an, a, a covenant that one person gives to another of something or some place or something that they will do that they have placed a degree of obligation upon. And so, so I want to you know, take that definition for myself personally of a promise that somebody gives. I remember when I was young that, that it was always the, you know, somebody would say they're going to do something. And I would ask them, do you promise? Do you promise? Amen. And the promise took what they said to a whole nother level because we believe that if you say you promise, that means you're committed to it. You There is some degree of obligation. You put yourself on the line. Do you see just the general? Now I'm talking about God, a general promise that way. I do. I do indeed. I, I agree wholeheartedly. I would only I, I would only add to that that not only is a promise a statement of one's intent to do something, but it's also a statement, it can be, one's intent not to do yes, something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I just want to be clear on that. To do something or not to do something. It is a commitment uh, either way. That works. Sister, Sister White, thanks God, because oftentimes I got to promise not to do that no Amen. more. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that, that works with wives most Sister of the time. Wife know what I'm, <laughs> Sister White know what I'm talking about. That, I promise, baby, I won't do that no more. Our kids have to promise uh, they won't do that no more. So, so, so we're talking about the whole aspect of the promise. And even before we get to God, we seem to take, even though man is faulty, we seem to take more uh, comfort when somebody gives us a promise. When somebody says, hey, I promise I'm going to be there. 
I promise I'm going to do it. Why does a promise seem to carry a little bit more, it, you know, it gives me a de greater degree of comfort when somebody tells me, even though man has broken many promises, but, but still the whole act of saying I promise seems to bring some level of comfort to yes, us. Yes, sir. And I believe it does just that. It's a matter of getting a greater level of comfort, as you pointed out so well. Uh, when we're dealing with each other, certainly promises are not between men and women are not the same as promises, uh, the promises of God. So when we hear somebody promise, we'd like to think that's, that's putting a little extra on it. Yes, sir. And so we can put a little more hope in it knowing and understanding that, again, it, it, it's a statement of intent. And uh, it doesn't always come about, again, between us, but thank God that his promises yes. are unlike any other because he swears on himself. Yes, sir. Uh, and there is no lying in him. There is no untruth or guile or misleading in him. Consequently, that promise can be uh, guaranteed and uh, dependent on. It is. I, I think we have a tendency to believe that a person will put me more energy and effort yes, into keeping that covenant when they have put that oath or they put that vow there. That Do you promise to tell the truth, yes, the whole sir. truth and nothing but the truth? Where where if that covenant, if that vow was not there, we, we have a little bit more room to, but when a person promises, we believe that they have now not I won't say box themselves in, but they have zeroed in on their behavior lining up with what it is that they've said they're going to do or, in, as you said earlier, not going yes, to do. Yes, sir. It gives us greater comfort and greater hope. But but like you say, you know, in, in court, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth? And they bring the Bible and make you put your hand on it. But we still know there's such yes, thing sir. as perjury. They do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you can be charged for that. And that's for people who don't keep that promise. Uh, and who don't quite uh, do what they say they're going to do. And, and I think, like other words that are oftentimes used, words like friend, uh, words like love, um, I think promise has taken a beating. And I think it's largely taken a beating yes, because, sir. again, people who have given us promises who... And some, and this is the beauty I love about it, is you know to release other people. Sometimes it's not the fact that 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 I was mean or I meant to violate my promise. Sometimes in my own humanity, Amen. I was not able to keep That's the real. promise. That you know I could promise my children I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars, but if my check doesn't come. I'm not able to fulfill my promise. So as a result of that, either by, by wickedness or by weakness, we've gotten to a place in which people's promises don't kind of mean what it is that they kind of used to mean. And so so even when you promise me something nowadays, there is a tendency that that we all have to even question the, the degree or the validity of the promise. No doubt, no doubt. And that's the great, that's why you're the great teacher that you are. You brought that up. Because indeed, some promises are broken unintentionally. Yes, sir. Some promises are not kept uh, because it was outside of the power of the person who promised to keep it. For whatever reason, the check doesn't come. Uh, yes, sir. What, whatever the reason is, they get in a terrible accident. And so they can't be somewhere when they are stuck in the hospital. Uh, they can't be at that other place, perhaps, that yes, they sir. promised to be. So that's a good distinction you made. Uh, amen, amen. So, so as a result of that, I, I, I think, you know, just keep taking us down the line, that just like, again, love, father, those things, when, when we then speak of them on the level of God as making a promise or as God being a father, because the view that we have is so cracked to some degree and so flawed that God and his promises sometimes end up being lumped into the same um, category, if we're not careful, uh -oh. uh, or, or we have a a mixed view. You know, I was saying on on this week that I had no concept of what Father God was because I did my earthly father was such a damaging relationship. It took a while for me to understand what the love of the the true father was. And so when we talk about the promises of God, sometimes there is I, I believe that's also this problem because sure. because we've lumped God's Amen. promises with with human promises. Amen. Would you? Yes, sir. That, okay. That, that's, that's a very good point because, again, we are all the sum total of our experiences. And some of our experiences are heartbreaking. Some of our experiences were uh, deceived, de uh, you know, situations where we were deceived in and we weren't loved. And uh, we, we didn't have all those uh, guarantees that the Heavenly Father gives us. And so when we have earthly examples 
uh, of him, obviously they can do nothing but fall short. Yes, sir. And so as a result of that, it kind of skews our view and, and it kind of distorts our our view of, of promises and, and what they are and whether or not they, they can be kept and whether or not they are real. Yes, sir. Uh, and that's why we have to make the distinction between human promises yes, sir. and the promises of the God. The promises of yes, God. Sir. Speaking of those great promises, because those are the ones we really want to talk about. We really want to talk about the whole aspect of uh, a New Testament believer uh, being able to understand uh, the promises of God, being able to walk in, to comprehend, and to truly be able to define um, the promises of God. We clearly, I, I think, you know, we might be on two ends of the same table. I, no I think doubt. we truly can see in Scripture where where, 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 where Scripture will, will begin to talk to the promises of God. So yeah. I'm going to allow you to first crack at the table. Uh, and so so just if, if a layman was here and they had read that someplace, uh, you take the first swing at the piata, and we're talking about the promises of God, the promises of God. Uh, well, again, I would say, uh, such as with any promise, uh, the question is who made the promise? For example, we talk about Jesus being our object of faith. We talk about faith and faith is very important when we are talking about promises. But faith is only as, as sound, it is only as good as the, as the object of that that's faith. Sir, that's sir. And so it is with the person that promises. Uh, that's why Hebrews, uh, the sixth chapter, the 13th uh, verse tells us that Jesus swore by himself Self. because there was nothing Greater. or no one higher that he could swear by. And we know that uh, in swearing by himself, Jesus in his high priestly prayer, uh, John 17 and 17, asked God, his father, to sanctify those he was leaving in truth, for his word was true. And so truth is the absence of lies. Truth is the absence of excuses. Truth is the absence of deceit. Uh, and so truth is perfect. Uh, so uh, Jesus asked that uh, God sanctifies uh, the disciples and us by extension in truth because his word was truth. And Titus tells us that uh, as we look toward the promise of eternal life, uh, that Jesus, uh, in, in the hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, yes, sir. promised before the ages began. Uh, there's a very popular verse uh, that I used to hear in the church. Even when I first started coming to the church, it rang in my ears because, of, because uh, the preacher would always say, uh, God is not a man that he would lie. lie, neither is he the son of man. You see what I mean? So I always, that, that stuck in my head before I even knew anything about scripture. God is not a man that he would lie. And that principle alone tells us that, that uh, God is the ultimate promise keeper. Yes, sir. The ultimate promise maker because his promises are grounded in himself. As I'm studying this word promise and when I'm talking about the promises of God, I, I love it because uh, when I look at this Greek word, it, it, is, uh, it denotes one that is made by him that is absence of the petition from me. Yes, uh, and, and, and it reminded me when I was going to study this when I was a child. When I was a child, uh, when my dad would tell me he was going to do something, I would always say, Dad, do you promise? And so his, his promise was the answer to my petition. Uh, but when we look through scripture, God makes vows or promises to do something and has nothing to do with me asking, me begging him, Father, would you please do something? Father, would you please? Uh, he's just because he loves me, because he set his affection upon me, because his grace and mercy and his holiness and his righteousness are bound with on the inside of him. He has decided to speak words towards me of yeah. things that he will do and things that he will not do and has nothing to do with me at all. So I love that because yeah. God promising me is not because I've just begged him. And more oftentimes with us, when we're trying to get somebody to promise, we're trying to beg somebody to do something yeah. we want them to do. Yes. You know, honey, you going to make me dinner? Do you promise? Daddy, you going to do this? Do you promise? And so it's us taking a person and bending them to our will. But when you look at scripture, when you understand the revelation of God's promise, it's not me asking him for nothing. It's him stepping into my world and decreeing and declaring what he's going to do over my life. Yes, sir. Indeed. Indeed. And that's why uh, it, it's foundational. When we look at promises, again, you mentioned a covenant. A covenant is, covenant is a formal binding yes, agreement sir. Yes, sir. defining what? Both relationships and responsibilities between two people. 
And God, from the very beginning, set promises that were projected toward us, but first grounded in Abraham. Yes, sir. Uh, And you talked about uh, uh, it has nothing to do with us. The Abrahamic covenant or the promise that he made uh, Abraham to make him and his offspring a great nation. Yes, sir. To make his name great. Uh, and us by extension to bless him and to cause him to be a blessing to the descendants, to not only his descendants, his own progeny, but to the world. God made that promise to Abraham and again to us by extension. Yes, sir. And it was totally unconditional. Yes, sir. He, he, there was no conditions placed on Abraham. He didn't have to do this. He didn't have to do that. And it's timeless. There was no time frame. It didn't only last for a certain length of time. By contrast, if I can just very quickly say the Mosaic Covenant, the next major promise that's made in the Bible was totally conditional. It was totally temporal. God in Exodus 19, 5 and 6 tells the children of Israel, out of all nations, you Israel will be my treasured possession, my holy nation. But what? That was only if they kept his commandments. Yes, sir. And so we had these civil and these criminal laws that came out of that. And if you violated that, you, you were, we were in violation of the promise. And so that's why we see the book of Judges when we see the people who, were, who, who, who obey God for a period of time. And then when they would stop obeying God, what? They would, they would face hard times. God would chastise them and they would cry out to God again and they would come back to God again and God would restore them and bless them again and then they would do it again. It was temporal. Yes, sir. It was temporal. It could be given and taken away based upon uh, what their response was. But the law, that's the law. Yes, sir. And thank God for grace. Thank yes, God for his promise because the law really, the, the, the limited purpose of the law has always been to demonstrate that we human beings are trapped in sin that we are in desperate need of a righteousness that can only be found outside of ourselves and that in Jesus and can only be accessed and acquired by faith. Awesome. And faith awesome. in Jesus. Awesome. Yes. So I love it. I love it that apart from us, um, not at our beckoning, not at our call, not at us seeing a catalog and point out a husband or a car Amen. or a job or a healing that we want, but God just out of his abundant love and grace Amen. has Amen. set his affection upon us to make us promises. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and, and he didn't really, I, the other thing I love is that he didn't have to promise because he was God. So just by him saying it could come to pass, but that we might have an everlasting covenant that we might be able to stand upon. Not yeah. not, not for himself, but he made the promise for us to, right. to, 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 I won't say to appease, but to give us some sense of, uh, of hope and peace and faith. Uh, because he was God. And as the text will tell us, he's God and he cannot lie. He Amen. cannot lie. If he says it, uh, it's going to come to pass. So, well, uh, I hope and pray that you've been blessed so far. This first little uh, tidbit of the promises of God. I know each and every one of you who are New Testament believers are standing up on a promise from God. And so uh, today we want to encourage you that God has made some promises. And if God has made a promise, he cannot lie. He won't go back on it. You have his name. You have his word. Uh, you have his, you have heaven and earth trying to back up or working to back up everything that he has said. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and talk about what God's promises are. Uh, how can we walk in them? Are they for everybody? Uh, stay tuned to us on A Mother's Cry. We'll be right back in a second. Hey everybody, Pastor Philip White from the Christ Center Church. From 2010 until the present time, there has been over 10,000 train collisions at railroad crossings. Of those 10,000 collisions, over 1,200 people have literally lost their lives. One thing seems to be clear, that train runs into anything, train always wins. Train versus truck, train versus car, even train versus train. At the end of the day, the train is going to win. Not only in locomotives, but also in life. We learned the principle that anytime the untrained meets the train, the train will always win. Two people going for a job. One of them likes to cook, and the other one has gone to culinary school and trained to cook. My money, the job is going to go to the person that is trained to cook because train always wins. Two people are going to fight. One of them just kind of likes to fight, but the other one has gone to school and studied martial art, and he's been trained to fight. I'm going to close my eyes because at the end of the day, I believe the person that has trained to fight is going to win because I believe that train always wins. Proverbs chapter 22 verse number 6 tells us if we would train our child in the way that he should go, 
that when he gets old, he will not depart. Train, to place in the mouth in the interest of something in its infancy stage, to point it towards the clear and the most productive path, and to watch and believe God by faith that it will reach its destiny, its purpose, and its goal. Train up a child. Not only can you train up a child, but you can train up your fitness. You can train up your finances. You can train up your spiritual discipline. And anytime the untrained meets the trained, trained always wins. This is Pastor Philip White. This has been another generated moment. God bless. Goodness, as promised, I'm back. Amen. <laughs> As promised, see, I kept my promise. Uh, as <laughs> promised, I am back. But again, uh, just like I told you, it couldn't have been that I, something could have happened in between that break that I was gone. So don't care, right. don't take my promises to the bank. Uh, but to the best of my ability, I promised I was going to be back, and I am back. And we're here talking about the promises of God. Those of you that are watching uh, live on Facebook, uh, let us know what your promises that you stand on, believing on God. At the end of the day, uh, if it's something that we can agree with you on the, on God's word, uh, we're going to believe God that God uh, will comfort your heart uh, that even though the promise hasn't come to pass, uh, stay in faith and stay in hope for it is going to come to pass. I want to talk about a couple of obvious promises uh, that I can see in God's word that he makes. Uh, I, I see uh, in the book of Luke that Jesus is the promise of the Father. Uh, it is announced or we see it come to pass in the New Testament, but he is promised all throughout the Old Testament. Jesus is the ultimate uh, Jesus, the Son of God, is the ultimate fulfillment of one of God's major promises that man, when we were lost, that when we were doomed and destined to hell, that God provided himself a ram in the bush in the person of Jesus Christ. So I'm getting the easy stuff that me and you're going to agree with on real quick. <laughs> <laughs> the, the easy ones. Get them out the way. Let's start out with the easy ones. Jesus Christ is the ultimate fulfillment. Glory to God of the promise of the Father. Come on, talk to us on it. Without a doubt. We mentioned the Abrahamic uh, covenant. Uh, we mentioned, I think, briefly the Mosaic covenant. Uh, again, in the New Testament, we had the Davidic covenant. Again, that one was unconditional also. The pr promise he made to David was that his house and his kingdom would endure forever Amen. before him, that his throne, the throne of David, would be established forever. And as you uh, mentioned so well, that was realized in Christ. That led us to the new covenant promise, the one that David talked about, the one that Jeremiah and Ezekiel prophesied about. But even David, David understood and had developed a deep faith in David, so as he said, I mean in God, so that he says through faith in Psalms 32, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin is the Lord does not count against him. And all of that was pointing toward that Jesus you were yes, just sir. talking about yes, a minute ago. For he is the covering, for he is the, the, the savior, for he is the, uh, the, the, the atonement for all of that sin that David spoke about. And because David had developed a deep faith uh, in God, so too for us to be uh, the recipients or the heirs, as we're called in the New Testament, of that new covenant, we too, uh, that new covenant, we too have to do it by faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so we're standing up on that. Not only is Jesus Christ uh, the promise of the Father, but we find that the Holy Spirit, uh, same book of Luke, yes, uh, sir. Jesus tells uh, the disciples to go to the open room and I'm going to send you the promise of the Father. Yes, sir. And, and so it's so beautiful. Uh, us as New Testament believers, we'll, we'll get to those other ones and you know, uh, those ones that we like to jump and shout on, but principally we can find consistently through God's word, he has promised Jesus Christ, who was the atonement for all of our sins. So if you get a, a brand new car, you got a, you got the other promises, but you don't get the main promises. The other promises won't do any good. And then we also see uh, that we have the promise of the Holy Spirit who comes to dwell within New Testament believers to assist and aid us to do the will of God. We can clearly see throughout scripture this promise, Amen. this promise of the Father in which he keeps his word. He causes it to come to pass. Talk about the New Testament believer understanding that principally he's promised uh, first his son and then he has promised his spirit unto us. Yes, sir. And, and, and again, he promised us that spirit uh, because it is that spirit. Uh, that, uh, like you said, enables us and empowers us to do what's separate and apart from that spirit we could not do. Yes, sir. And so because his 
promise is unconditional because God cannot lie. If indeed he says that his people will be saved, that his people are special, that his people will have eternal life, then he cannot let that eternal life rest in our hands. Yes, sir. Because again, we've determined earlier, we can have the best of intent. You said you were faithful and you, and you were right. You came back from that break. But the truth of the matter is, the <laughs> truth of the matter is, God could have took your breath during, during break. that break. You could have been laying out on the floor, and you. And when we came back, we just we, we'd had to apologize because we got to take <laughs> Brother White to the hospital or whatever. I couldn't it was. catch the problem. You know what I mean? So, so again, it's it's more than intent. And because God makes the promises, He makes these promises to us. He, in His graciousness, ensured that we couldn't mess them up. Yes, sir. So He sends His Spirit. Yes, to do sir. all those things that, that 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 causes us to obey him, that causes us to fulfill at least as best we can, as humanly possible, his word. And he sent his son, Jesus, to cover the rest. Awesome. awesome Amen. Awesome. So he's promised us, he's promised us his son and he's promised us the spirit. We got some great people that's on there joined us. Uh, Dr. James Richardson joined us. Sister Ramonda Clifton has joined us. Rodney Matthews, yeah. you guys log on, give us some comments. Let us know what promises you're standing on. We're trying to give away uh, some gift cards, Subway gift cards, Subway gift cards to the person who gives us a comment, who calls in. The number is 323-965-1600. 323-965-1600. Either give us a comment on what promise you're standing on uh, or a call. Uh, we want to give away some gift cards. Now only uh, has he promised us Jesus Christ. Uh, not only has he promised us the Holy Spirit, but I believe that he has promised us uh, some other things that pertain to righteousness, godliness, and holiness. And I've done that. Speak I believe he's... On huh? Speak on them. Speak yes, on, sir. Speak on <laughs> <laughs> uh, Before I get to those, I want to talk about the fact of why he has done that. Why yes, has sir. he promised us? Uh, and what does it do when we bask in that? Uh, every time in the scripture, it talks about the fact that it begins to spark our hope and our faith in him. Second um, uh, uh, Peter 1 through 4, uh, Hebrews chapter 6, it talks about that when God gives us these promises, these promises of salvation, he keeps his word, that we lay hold of them through hope, through faith, and through patience. Uh, Hebrews is the one uh, that I love. He says, for be not slothful, be followers of them through faith and patience, inherit the promises. Uh, verse number 15 says, so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So as we are holding on to the promises of God, it is also working some things within us. It's working hope. It's working faith and showing up good God from Zion is working patience within us. So as God has promised, he cannot lie, but usually there is some time in between the promise and the fulfillment of the promises. And as, as New Testament believers, we are to operate, which I see as these three components, which are hope, faith, and we are to exercise patience. Praise God. Are we still at the same table on that Yes, one? sir, without yes, a sir. doubt. Uh, you were speaking of Hebrews 6, uh, beginning at, uh, uh, what was it, uh, 13, beginning at 13 and basically going through 20 about the promise as it was first delivered uh, uh, to Abraham and by extension his progeny. Uh, so then that same promise that was uh, extended to Abraham by extension his, his natural or his human progeny, progeny went forth and extended to us his spiritual progeny. And so if we back up just a few verses, that same chapter, Hebrews 6, beginning at uh, verse 9. Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, this is the writer of Hebrews writing to the, uh, to the saints of God, believe we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness to have the same full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who, through faith and patience, inherit the promises. All right. Amen. All right. 
All right. So, so again, so, so it should be working something within us. Without a doubt, uh, it, should be, Spirit, it should be. It should be the Holy Spirit. It should be causing faith to work yes, within us. Yes, sir. Uh, patience to work within us. Yes, sir. Hope to work within us, because the Holy Spirit is reminding us that God is not a man that he should lie, and that even though it might be delayed, even though it might not be coming in the timing that we want, yes, uh, in the way that we want, in the manner that we want, at the end of the day, God is going to come through on His promises, and yes, so we sir. want to encourage. Every person that's out there, uh, we want to keep everybody who who might believe that you're standing on the promises of God or a promise that God has given you to hold on to faith, to hold on into patience. Don't lose the fight. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel just because it hasn't come. Uh, 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 Peter says, don't count God as slack as men count slackness, Amen. but that he will come to pass and his promises will be sure. So I want to just take a second and encourage somebody out there. Amen. That's standing up on God's promises that God is going to come through with what he said he's going to do. Yes, sir. And and, and again, we can do that. Uh, and, and there are various scriptures to do that. But I would also just add, too, that I believe that scripture labors greatly the fact that we are sojourners yes, here. Sir. The fact that this is very temporary here. The fact that we were born, be born, we are, have been born, we'll live a certain length of time, but there is no length of time promised to us, you know, and then we're going to die. And so because I think scripture labors greatly not to fall in love with this world, not to be conformed to this world, uh, 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 not to treasure the things of this world. You know what I mean? Because he do that, does that, I believe that in part that is done to encourage us again that God is going to take us through to the end and in the end, the promise of eternal life, the greatest promise, yes, sir. the absolute ultimate yes, sir. promise will be ours. All right. So full disclosure, we 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 danced around. <laughs> Big brother and little brother is dancing around. We're trying to do a cue, be, be, because let, let's get. We can lovingly do it. There are some promises that doubt. that we do know that you know you know. Contemporary Christian is always talking about the promises that God has made, and it's yes, sir. the promises for the house, the car, the wife, the 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 whatever it is, and so. I'm going to go ahead and let you, once again, I'm going to let you take the, the crack at the piñata. There, there are some promises that you believe that are either not made to New Testament believers or they're not made to everyone. So yeah. let's let's lovingly at the same table, ha on different ends of the table, just like if we are in the studio, let, let's talk about those. Without if you don't, a doubt. And, do and, and I have faith that we we will. We always, always have do. before yes, and we sir. always will. <laughs> At least uh, while the cameras is on, we, we, even <laughs> private, we, we do it in private lovingly. So we'll do it, do it yes, here lovingly. Yes, come on, let's and, go. And, and like you say, I think what you what we are dancing around is is that I believe uh, uh, that the promises of God, by and large, are made not to us as individuals, but is made to the people of God. All right, is made to the people of God. Uh, uh, the nation of Israel was required to follow the law perfectly. And when they didn't follow the law, they were in violation. And the one or two or five or 10 or 1 million or 1,000 or however many people who did follow the law was punished along with everybody else. That is to say that when God judged Israel for breaking the law, he did not remove the handful of people who claimed that they kept it perfectly, and there was no one, really, to be honest. Uh, but the, the law was to be kept perfectly by everyone. The promise was made to the nation of, of Israel. The children promised, the holy nation, the people of God, and now the church, who are now the modern-day Israel, at least as it was represented in the Old Testament, who are the people of God, the church, the promises are made to us. Okay. The covenant is made to us as a people, That's not not to us as individuals with, with cars and houses and land and all these wonderful Come things. Come on, I want to stoke the fire. On. Come on, let's stoke yes. the fire. Hold on. Stoke the, has, God promised, has God promised to heal me? Has God promised to heal me? He has not. Okay. No, sir. No, All right, sir. hold on. I want to yeah. go, go down, but then I can come back. Okay. Has, has, see, we keep dancing on that Hebrew. Let's go. Has, <laughs> has, God, has, God, has God promised uh, to, uh, I, I hit heal first, right? Has yeah. God promised to provide for my needs? Without a doubt. 
He's your needs, but not everything you want. Okay, all right. There's a difference between our needs and our wants. All right. And God has promised to give us all our needs. He says he's already given us all we need for life and godliness. But in his graciousness, he also gives us more. He gives us extra. He gives us houses and sometimes not even just houses, but big houses. He gives us sometimes houses so big, uh, they weigh bigger than we need. Has he, he promised that? Has he promised me? I'm keep interviewing. Yes, sir. Uh, has he promised me that my, you know, train up a child in the way they should go. And when he gets old, he will not depart. Has he promised me? Can I stand on a promise that my child's going to be saved if you, I live You cannot. Right? You okay. cannot. All right. All right. He, 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 he instructs us to train up a child in the way <laughs> he should go. And, and you doing your job. He tells you to do your job. But at the end of the day, I think it's very clear. Anybody with a family can tell you that just because you trained him up right don't mean, don't right. mean he does Right. right. Just because you trained him up right don't mean that he ain't in the penitentiary right now and been there for a long time and might not come out because he strayed away from your training. Has he promised me that I'm going to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in my uprise and my downsetting? Um, uh, 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 and, again, and yes, the, he promised that, but I think that, that, that promise is more allegorical than anything else. And it simply means that I am going to bless you completely. You talk about healing, and we know that, Je that Jesus came and healed many. But he didn't heal them all. He didn't, heal them all. he didn't promise to heal them all. He didn't promise to heal any so that by grace, now that he's healed some, that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. But he did not promise to heal everyone or everyone would be healed. People would not be dying in the hospital. People would not be suffering from great disease because we've already established if he promised it, he would keep his promise. So clearly he has, he has not promised to heal everyone or everyone would be healed. So is the promise to all is the, is the promise to all believers? Is the promises of God to all believers? It, again, as a covenant family. Okay. As a covenant family. And that means as a covenant family we will be healed. So, we will be healed. But everyone, not necessarily it, not necessarily physically. So make sure I'm understanding. Again, we're still just dialogue. Good, great dialogue. Yes, still sir. So, so in other words, healing is a promise that is made to us as a covenant family. So we might see some heal, but we might not see all heal. Is, am, I, am I putting putting words in your well, mouth when I say it that way? Or well, okay. no, no, no. I, right. I, I guess that's for the most part accurately. However, I would just nuance that the healing that is promised is spiritual healing. The physical healing is extra. The physical healing is extra. I love how, uh, I believe it's 2 Samuel, the ninth chapter, uh, where David, who has become king after Saul has died, goes looking for Mephibosheth. You remember the story of Mephibosheth? Yes, sir. He goes looking for Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, Jonathan's son. And he wants him to come in. He wants to bless Mephibosheth. He wants to bring Mephibosheth into the fold. He don't owe Mephibosheth nothing, just like God don't owe us nothing. By his grace, he promises and gives us. He gave us all those promises, like you said, not based on what we would do, not based on what we deserve, but in his graciousness. David didn't owe Mephibosheth nothing. He went looking for Mephibosheth, brought him in, and basically treated him like a king. And that is an allegory for us, that God brings us in. And, and the Bible says that Mephibosheth sat at the king's table and lived very well, and he was lame on both of his feet. Meaning, Mephibosheth was not perfect. Mephibosheth wasn't even healed. But he was blessed by David, who was the God character in that uh, allegory. So, so from you, uh, what promises... Can I, as a New Testament believer, are there some clear ones that you believe that I can stand upon that when things are going, I won't say a mist, or when things in my life that I'm going through, are there things that you believe uh, in God's word? Are there promises that I, as a New Testament believer, and those that are watching, in your view, believe that I can stand upon? What, uh, what, what can I stand upon as a believer? You can stand upon the promise that God loves you, that God has made a way for you, that God will ultimately save you, that God will bring us all the way through uh, to eternal life. But again, the Bible tells us through and through that those of us who have faith in Jesus must not only uh, access atonement and salvation through Jesus, but we also have to take up his cross. Yes, sir. So, so we don't get a pass on any of those things. It's some wonderful, powerful uh, people of God 
who are, are crippled and have heart disease and suffer from diabetes and, and all these various things, they are not perfectly physically healed. There's no promise to do those things to them, yet we are to set our affection yes, on those things above. We are not to get too wrapped up in these things, but we are to do our job, just like we are to train up the child. We are to, we are to witness for, for, for Jesus Christ. We are to uh, speak of the goodness and the glory and the mercy and the graciousness of the, the God of the universe. We are to do all those things in the midst of whatever the daily uh, eventualities are in the midst of all situations. We are to look toward him in faith that what he's doing has purpose, whether we're comfortable in it or not, and that in the end, he will be glorified. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and I believe, uh, I believe like you, that the promises of God are not, uh, are not these, uh, this catalog that we thumb, th thumb through as New Testament believers, as many people do through in the Bible, and point and say, yeah. that's the one, that's the one I want. Uh, and just like you order it from, uh, from Old Navy, that you order up a husband, you order up a good child, you order up a wife, you order up a promotion on your Amen. job. Uh, we believe that ultimately through a scripture that God, what he's promised us is salvation. Uh, he's yeah. promised us all things that pertain to righteousness and godliness. And as his children, he will bless us. I think a couple of things that we've got to understand is that what he's promised and when will that promise be fulfilled. Some promises, I believe as a New Testament believer, we will realize down here on earth. We will see the manifestation, not to everyone. But we will see healings because I believe that no it is we see it the children's bread. Sure, yes, sir. We will doubt. see provision of our needs. Won't mean that everybody will get a cow on a thousand hill, get a four bedroom. We will see the manifestation of God's word come to pass just to allow us know, to know that. But I think ultimately, uh, as New Testament believers, as you have so beautifully said, we ultimately be lo looking ultimately towards heaven because that is the final uh, uh uh, manifestation, I believe, of God's promise. And I believe Hebrews 12 uh, tells us that, that me, Hebrews 11 uh, tells us that many died in faith. Amen. They did not receive the promise, but they knew that he was, he that promised was going to bring it to pass. Amen. And so some of us will, 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 will die uh, in faith and God will ultimately do that when we spend eternity with God. Amen. And, and so, so I want to keep people constantly still believing on earth that there are some promises from God, lay hold to them. But ultimately what you want them to do is to save your body, your soul, and your spirit to live with forever with him, with, with Jesus Christ, where ultimately he will fulfill every mm -hmm. promise that we find um, in his word. So, Without, without a doubt. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I love what you just said. You're talking about saving the body and the soul and the spirit. At the end of the day, the only one of those things, which is temporal, is the body. Yes, sir. We're not designed to hang on to this body. Yes, sir. This body we're going to let go in when he fulfills that phase of his promise, we won't have these bodies anyway. They'll yes, be inferior. Uh, this body is totally temporary. So whether or not he heals this body on this particular plane is unimportant. As you mentioned in Hebrews 11, it spoke of those who died in faith. Moses died in faith. He didn't receive the promise. He didn't get to go over into no, the promised land. He died in faith, and yet he will receive the promise. Yes, Why? Sir. Because we'll be able to sit and talk to Moses one yes, day. Sir. We'll be able to share what that experience was like for him. Abraham died in faith. He didn't receive the promise, the ultimate promises that God gave him, but Abraham had faith. And because of that faith, God counted it as righteousness. So, so, so our goal is to grow us as New Testament believers. I know that probably when it said the promises of God, you thought we were going to uh, show you eight scriptures on how to walk into your new blessing, your new breakthrough, your, your, your new job promotion. But truly, when you look at the promises of God, it is you counting God as faithful who has given you his word and his promise that he will bring those things to pass. Ultimately, he has done it uh, through in the face of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has given uh, as the perpetuation for all of our sins. And he has given us the Holy Spirit who enables us to live God's word. And yes, we will receive some measure of the manifestation of God's word. Amen. There is healing available. Amen. There is provision for your needs. I am standing on God's word, believing in that Asia Amen. and Benjamin are going to be saved. Too. <laughs> standing on that word. But I Hallelujah. ultimately know that there are some promises that I will not get in time that I will ultimately get in eternity. But that does not stop my hope, my faith, my trust, and my belief in God and his holy word. So I pray that those of you out there that are standing on God's promise will continue to stand up on them. If you know that they are found and rooted in God's word, 
They ain't for nobody else's husband, nobody else's wife, nobody else's job, nobody else's money. But you know that what God has for you, it is for you. Stand up on God's word. Uh, know for sure that God has that promise for you. We're going to take our final break. We're going to come back and believe God uh, for those promises that are found in his word. That he's going to bring them to pass, and then we'll see you later on A Mother's Cry. We'll be right back in a second. Good afternoon, this is Minister Shirley Knight Harris coming to you with the Mother's Try. I thank you very much for supporting this ministry, but I'm in need of your help. I need to develop a board of director. If you would like to be on the board, please call me at 310-748-0610. Or you may go to my website at eskhm.org. It's very important that in order for us to continue to reach our young people, uh, through Mother's Try, we're on every Thursday from 2 to 3. I need you to call in, and you may call in at 323-965-1611-1600, you may call in. Or you may send your donations in through my post office box. Download at gospel. And if you're not sure how to do that, you can reach me on my on my uh, website or my email. And my email is eskhm at sbcglober.net. This is a nonprofit organization, and you would be able to deduct your donation off of your taxes. And we thank you very much. Again, this is Mother Stry reaching out to mothers and fathers that have lost their children to drugs incarcerated, being murdered, pimps, prostitution, drug dealers, and so forth, letting you know that God loves you and Jesus died for you. We are on every Thursday from 2 until 3. And thank you very much. Again, this is Minister Shirley Knight Harris. Hey, y'all, that's the founder. Evangelist Shirley Knight Harris, the great woman of God that the Lord has placed uh, and planted this vision uh, to reach those that are lost uh, in her spirit. Continue to uh, listen to that video and do those things that she asked uh, that this program might be sustained uh, and it might be increased. Real quickly before we go, somebody's out there, many people out there that, that have, uh, they're believing God for a promise, they're standing on God's word for something that they believe that God's going to do. Uh, how, how do we practically tell them to hold on to that and not to give in, not to... Dr. the in the towel, what advice would you give to them on a, on a, on a, on a, on a practical basis? Uh, on a practical basis, all we can do is continue to pray, pray to God. There's a scripture in Pastor White, you, you're much better at this than I am, uh, really. There's a particular scripture that essentially tells us that we can ask for anything and, and, and have that thing. But what that means is, what that means essentially is if we continue to pray for this thing. It says to pray for it and to pray for it without ceasing. The purpose of the prayer, the purpose of our supplication is to kind of get us in line yes, with what God's will is. So that sometimes the way the prayer begins will not be the way the prayer ends. In other words, God is faithful for all of his promises, but God would be a liar if he promised you perfect health, all the money you could spend, the biggest house that you could find, brand new car every year, and all these wonderful things that would be nice, but they're not practical. So as Christians, those of us who are New Testament believers, we have to practice what we preach. If indeed we do believe in God, if we do, indeed we do trust our God, then we are to trust that he has our best interest in heart. Yes, sir. We are to trust that he will and does show his love to us faithfully, even like I said earlier, when it's a little uncomfortable for us, even when sometimes it's hard to see. How many times as children we might have uh, did something or maybe we didn't do it. And, and, and we got chastised or even, a, well, back in the day, we got whoopings. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't get whoopings no more. So, man, but we got whoopings and we get that whooping. And in that whooping, in the pain of that whooping, we could not see that, that, that our parents not only loved us, but they were doing that in our best interest. And I say all that to say sometimes we don't know what is in our best interest. But God always knows what's in our best interest. So when we pray faithfully, regularly, patiently, and wait on him to do that which he does, when we do that, our wills come more aligned with what God would have us. And, and we'll get 
all that we need and much of what we want. Yes, sir. Real quickly, and now I'll throw it back to you to close us out. I, I believe that every person, as the Bible tells us in Hebrews 6, uh, to watch those who laid hold of the promise, but it tells us how they did it through faith and through patience. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the New Testament believer uh, should be feeding their faith with God's word. Yes, sir. Uh, sound and solid biblical teaching uh, on what God says about his promises. And so no matter what you're seeing on the outside, no matter what your senses are telling you, no matter what your friends are telling you, your faith needs to be constantly fed God's word to continue to keep reminding yourself what God has said. Then not only with faith, but then you need to work on patience because even though you know God's word, it doesn't mean that he's going to tell you when God's going to do it. Yes, and so sir. what you got to do is you got to use your faith to increase your patience to cause you to hang in there, Abraham, to cause you to hang in there, Moses, to cause you to hang in there, David, on those 12 years that you're running from Saul, even though you know that God has promised or God has announced what he's going to do in your life. And so those, I believe that you know that God has promised he's going to do something, get into a good Bible-believing church that's teaching a balanced diet of God's word and feed your faith. Feed your faith, stand up on God's word, sound and solid uh, exegesis of what God is saying, and then hold on with patience. Ask God to increase your faith and your patience that even though everything is going to miss, the child is going wrong, everything is going wrong, hold on and believe God that God's word is going to come to pass in your life. Pastor White, I can't add nothing yes, to that. That was, that was yes, perfect. That was yes, perfect. Sir. Yes, sir. All I can say is amen. Yes, sir. Father God, once again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for all that you do and all that you are. We thank you first for being God. Yes. We thank you that not only you've given us the discernment to be able to call you God, but you've given us the awesome privilege that it is to call you Father. Yes, and because we can call you Father, that means that you adopted us by faith. And because we can call you Father, that means we are heir to, heir, heirs to all the promises that you've given the people of God. And so we thank you for this wonderful distinction. We thank you for allowing us and enabling us and declaring us to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, O oh God, a, a peculiar people. That means we're not like everyone else. And so we thank you for uh, your, your spirit, O oh God, which you sent. Uh, and we lean on that spirit and trust that spirit, O oh God, and we trust and look forward to the various fruits of that spirit. Teach us through your spirit patience, O oh God. Teach us through your spirit, O oh God, the uh, 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 persistence. Teach us, O oh God, to, to be faithful and to, and to look forward all the time to what you do and what you have for us, O oh God. Teach us, O oh God, to remain in your spirit. Lean not to our own understanding, but to lean on you. We thank you for all those things, O oh God, but most of all, we thank you for your son because it was your son who, who procured it all for us. It was, it was your son who is the, uh, the procurer of all those promises. And so we thank you for sending you your son to pay a debt that he didn't know because we owed a debt that we couldn't pay. And so we thank you, O oh God, for all those things. It is in the name of your son that we ask it all and for his sake. And every baptized New Testament believer said, Amen. Amen. All right, we thank you so much for joining us today on A Mother's Cry. Again, uh, uh, be mindful of, of Mother Harris. Show her your love. Reach out to her as best you can in, many, in as many ways as you can. Until the next time, we look forward to seeing you here on A Mother's Cry. We love you all. God bless you, and thank you.
to the mountains in your life. Yes, you can. Nothing's impossible.